Welcome back to Big Red Rant. The coaching staff is starting to take shape for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Matt Rule has already brought in several staff members. Marcus Satterfield, formerly the offensive coordinator for South Carolina. Terrence Knighton, affectionately known as Pot Roast. You might remember him from the NFL. His last job was a D-line assistant coach, so he might be doing something like that for us. Maybe a bigger role. Evan Cooper, one of Matt Rule's favorite recruiters and defensive back coach. He spent time with him with the Panthers. He's been with Matt Rule through all of his stops. Ed Foley, special teams advisor. That might be his role, we're not sure. And of course, the ever swole Corey Campbell, our new and seemingly improved strength and conditioning coach. Let's be honest, it looks like night and day. But arguably the biggest question remains, what is going to happen to our beloved Mickey Joseph? His win over Iowa has many Husker fans won over long-term. And it's understandable. The team never stopped fighting for him and he's an incredible recruiter. Before we get into things, hit the like button for us and tell us in the comments, do you want Mickey Joseph to stay with the Huskers and did you want him to be the coach over Matt Rule? Gary, please tell me that Mickey's going to stay. Please tell me that Nebraska's planning on throwing a bag at him to stay as a lesser role than he had before. I mean, that's what it sounds like. It sounds like that's what it's coming down to. Him supposedly wanting to be there, Rule apparently wanting him. I'm going off of what you hear from people that you think you could trust or should trust or whatnot. We've, you and I have talked before about how I thought after he took over for Frost a couple weeks after that, when Whipple made the comments he made at the press conference about him starting to experience what it's like to be the head coach and not being so football oriented, you know, being more that CEO type and him kind of alluding to maybe he didn't like that. Mickey Jones is 50, what, four, seven years old, something like that. He's been a highly sought after assistant coach for a while and hasn't even taken a, a coordinator's position. I don't know if that's because he hasn't been offered it or if he really he seems like the type of guy that really does like building relationships with the players, getting to know them from a pretty young age and the recruiting process. And, and that's fine. A lot of guys will do that through their whole career. Maybe he's just that guy who wants to do that. He wants to do it here. Is he leveraging? the leverage that he now has because of this to get a bigger payday is he torn with taking that next step to go be a head coach potentially at like a tulsa or smaller school to work his way up i, I don't know but it, it seems like from what you hear he wants to be here supposedly rule wants him here i don't know how much i put into that you know and what rule wants I could see Rule maybe feeling obligated in a sense, one, because of the love and, and the, the big push from the fans to make him just the coach, period. You know, people, the majority of the fan base wanted him to be the coach over Rule. A lot of people were upset about Rule getting hired. A lot of people didn't like, they, to be honest, people didn't know a lot about Rule. But once he was named the coach, there was a lot of people upset with it. What about Mickey? He beat Iowa and the last two coaches he spent 60 million on couldn't beat him and all of those things. As, as far as that goes, I mean, Trev's not looking at this from an emotional standpoint. You know, the dude likes Mickey a lot. He keeps talking about how he has all this respect for him. These ADs that hire these coaches, their jobs, their careers essentially depend on. He's not going to trust a guy who's 50 some years old and never even been a coordinator to rebuild an entire program. Be it his alma mater, no matter how much respect he has for him, he can recruit his ass off and he develops players. It's a different game. And the same reason people don't like rule because of his failures in the nfl it's a different game i mean we could run down a laundry list of elite legendary college coaches that couldn't cut it in the nfl so i mean i i i completely understood it and i even said towards the end of the year like i don't think mickey's the guy to be the head coach now i'm at the point where i don't even know how important it is to keep him other than the emotional side of things like yes the dude's an elite wide receiver coach an elite recruiter but if you look at some of the names that are popping up that rule might be bringing in as a recruit and he's the type of guy that's going to get guys to fit systems he wants to run not just try to win the recruiting you know ranking list or whatever against ohio state and michigan and penn state and other other teams in the big 10. i, I don't know that it's that important that you're getting elite speed receivers you know, he's already offered some track guys from around here but I think he's looking more fit, like for getting guys. And I think Mickey could do that. You know, you tell Mickey, we want these types of guys, he can go do that. But does Mickey want to do that against what he's done, what he's comfortable doing? You know what I'm saying? So like, I could even see Mickey leaving to take 
maybe a, a, an offensive coordinator, an assistant coordinator position where he can still do what he wants to do, build those relationships, make the amount of money. If he wants to go coach, this is the perfect time to do it. You know, his stock is super high, obviously, but I just don't know. I don't know that the fit that the fans want, that we all want, we all would love Mickey to stay. Like you're saying, talk, talk you into it or whatever. I would love to hear that he's staying. And by the time we get this out, maybe he has, you know, or maybe he's decided he's going, we'll see what happens. I don't know, man. I just don't think it's as important as a lot of people have put into it. And I don't think that people, I think people are putting a lot of the emotion that they have for Mickey in front of what's going to make sense from starting over from scratch and rebuilding a program under two very different styles of both offense and defense compared to what you have from him. Now, I can't help but think that people watching this might misconstrue what you're saying as you don't want Mickey. Maybe we don't need him. Is that what you're saying? No, man. I said, you know, I love Mickey. I'd love for him to stay. I'd love for us to be able to get the guys that we need in the positions we need to rebuild this and have him bringing, you know, Trey Palmer's along. You know what I'm saying? But I'm saying for Mickey's sake, one, if he wants to be a head coach, I hope he goes and does whatever stepping stones are straight into whatever he wants to do. You know what I mean? Like he's earned that. He deserves that. I think he'd be great at it. I don't know that that's where his love and passion for football is. I kind of like I alluded to, I kind of get a feel more that it's it's the relationship and the recruiting and the, and the development. What I'm saying is there's talks of Elijah Robinson from a and M, who who was the number one recruiter in the country or whatever last year. There's there's a lot of talks and ties in with him. Maybe we get it, maybe we don't. I'm not. That's not really my point. My point is, I feel like Matt Rule, as much as he talked about strategy and having like a plan all the time and the day by day thing, he's gonna bring in guys or already knows roughly what he wants for his system. And I'm not, again, I'm not saying that Mickey can't transition to that and develop relationship with linemen and linebackers and things like that. I'm just saying he was here for a year and we got Casey Thompson and the coldest Crawford and Trey Palmer and, and all these guys, but it's, it's a cart before the horse thing. And again, that doesn't mean that had Scott Frost or whoever been like, Hey, we've, we've got giant issues in the trenches and we need you to shift your recruiting to these guys, right? It's not his position. It's not his, his history of bringing in those types of guys so he can keep bringing in these these studs but like we've said forever we don't really need that especially when we don't have a line to let these guys get loose to let the quarterback go through his reads and do things like that here's my question yeah if we let's say we get this number one recruiter from a m can you have too many good recruiters on the staff absolutely not so this guy gets the the meat and potatoes and Mickey goes out and brings in the dessert. Right. Is that fair? That's fair. But now we're bringing up the question of if we're talking a million to a million and a half that you're going to have to pay Mickey as a wide receiver slash recruiter on your staff. And that's you, right? I'm paying you a million and a half or our, our boss, the people we work for is paying you a million and a half because you're Mickey Joseph and you bring everything to the table that he's bringing to the table. And then our same boss comes to me and goes, hey, you were the top recruiter in the country last year. Everybody would want you on the staff. We're going to bring you on. How much are you going to pay me? You're going to pay me more than you to be another position coach, a D-line coach that can recruit. So now you've got two position guys that are making a million dollars, you know what I'm saying? Or a little over a million dollars. And how much are you paying your coordinators? They got to make more than that then what's left for the how much meat are you leaving on the bones to go down the rest of the way for the rest of your position coaches and then to your all your assistants and your uh or advisor type positions you know what i mean and i don't know maybe it could make it work and i'm i'm with you 100 percent. you can't ever have too much good but i'm just saying uh, overall i want mickey to stay i hope to god sometime tomorrow we hear the rules keeping him we don't have to worry about replacing the recruits that are going to leave, you know, switch to go wherever he goes. We don't have guys going in the portal. We're going to have guys going in the portal, but we don't have more of them going in the portal to follow Mickey. I hope none of that is an issue. I'm just looking at it from a coach's perspective that's new. And the thing I haven't brought up, which I could see being a real thing of why Matt Rule wouldn't want to keep him. The fan base of the team that you now run didn't want you. They wanted this guy, and now you keep him on your staff. Historically, Matt Rule has gone one and whatever and one and whatever. If we start off bad, if we get beat that first game against Minnesota, and we look sluggish against Colorado, or God forbid, lose that game as well, how quick are these fans that love Frost, didn't take too long, and Frost is a bad example, 
But I mean, the ups and downs, you know, when when Frost was gone, everybody wanted Urban Meyer or you like we wanted Fickle. And there's different guys that they had in mind. But after that Oklahoma game, when Mickey went on those two games and won, all of a sudden, everybody wants Mickey. And then it went to shit and everybody's like, okay, well, who's out there for coaching? And then we beat Iowa. Okay, now we got to keep Mickey. Like the fans do that, man. So it's like. Even if he won a lot of fans over at that press conference and if he continues to win fans over as he builds his staff and we, we people get excited about the transfer portal guys we get or the recruitments we get, as soon as the games start getting played, if he starts off slow, everybody's going to say you should have kept Mickey, whether he's on the staff or not. But if he's on the staff, now you're in the building with that dude every day, answering questions, both of you, to the press about people clamoring and saying, well, you made the wrong, you made the wrong hire or whatever. So... I don't know, man. I don't think Mickey's the type of guy that would pull in a different direction. He seems like an all-in guy. If he's going to be part of something, he's part of it. Not knowing if he was going to have the job or not, he recruited his ass off through the rest of the season. He kept everybody, he kept control of the locker room. He kept everybody fighting and, and doing all that stuff. And that's why everybody loves him. So I don't see him being the type of guy that is going to be like, yeah, I'll stick around because I can make a million or a million and a half. And then undermine or not 100 back rule i think he would do that but rule is building a staff and you can't pretend that from a human aspect that's not in the back of your mind like do i want to keep the guy that everybody wanted over me you know especially not knowing how this thing's going to start off next year i, I think that's a fact it's definitely a factor that's a great point your point brings me to what i was already thinking which is the deep down biggest reason why i think husker fans want mickey to stay and that is frost was a guarantee and that didn't work so how could rule ever be a guarantee we can, we're people are done with the whole this is i think a lot of people are done with being 100 percent in on a coach that can't miss especially considering he's, he doesn't have big 10 experience if things go off the rails there's no one we'd rather have than mickey in the wings because he's proven he could keep the team together, keep them fighting, and not let it turn into a complete shit show. He's a safety valve that is nice to have there. That's why I think people really want to keep him. I th I agree that that's what a lot of people think, but he did all that and still lost the majority of the games he coached. So Matt Rule lost the majority of the games he coached this year again with the Panthers and he didn't lose the locker room you know what I'm saying so I mean you can get the same thing in a different package or in a different guy so it's I don't I think it will come down to why and how they're losing you know if, if it seems like the guys are quitting and he's lost the locker room then yeah 100 percent, you can't argue it but I don't think people always use that logic they don't think those steps through when Oh, red isn't working, should go with blue. Blue's not working, should go with green. You know what I mean? It's just always what's the next thing. And we don't put a lot of logic into, especially something with like, as passionate as Nebraska fans are, it's so emotional driven that there's not a ton of logic that gets put into play. Now, I'm not saying fans are idiots. When as time passes, dust settles, they know how to think things through and they understand how football works and shit like that. But I'm just saying, I think it would depend more on how we lose if we start off losing or we get to a lull where we're losing, then it will just matter that we're losing as far as the Mickey rule thing goes. Tell us what you think in the comments. Can't wait to hear from y'all. Go Big Red.